um, I was joking with uh, my friend, uh, Tracy and um, Van Jackson yesterday, saying that uh, this, this presentation is probably going to win an award for the longest elderly, if there is such a thing. Um, we got, yeah. Okay, I'll stay right here. Um, so we've got seven names here. Um, I'm the last one, Li Xue Zhang, and uh, Xiao Liang, and Dan Messi from ISI are also here. They will help me handle the questions. Give you a little background. Uh, this is a work, actually one piece of, um, many pieces of work, funded by uh, Dapper under the Fault Tolerance Networking Program. So for this talk, we only um, present our observed issue, one specific issue on the DGP operations and propose some simple solutions. So what is the most we could talk about? Um, definition first. The, uh, you know, PGP routes, everybody knows that, includes a prefix and an AI task. I give you a specific example, this is 131, 179, uh, slash 16, that's, you know, announced by the AS52, which is UCLA, uh, it's our address space, uh, and then there's a task, and everybody knows what origin AS is. Multiple origin AIs means that, that the same prefix um, got announced by multiple original AIs. Um, so there's a different problem than the previous presentation, which said, you know, addresses in the dark space here, their addresses announced <laughs> a claim to be owned by uh, multiple parties. Um, from this point on, um, we still have to use some addresses and AS numbers to illustrate the problem, but um, which I just made up the numbers. So don't take offense if I use your AS numbers or your address space. Uh, you know, we just by, um, for, for the illustration purpose, okay? So here's an example of how the MOAS actually happened. You know, there's one block there, uh, 128.916, owned by some guy, and they have the official BGP parent with ASX. Okay, so ASX make an announcement. And uh, there's also a backdoor connection uh, to the AS226, and through that backdoor connection, AS226 decided they should announce that prefix as well. That's how you get a more conflict. But, uh, this is not bad. This is really kind of a valid case because you know, it doesn't matter which way AS Y decides to go, you can reach the destination. But the real bad situation, for example, if, if you know, assuming the AS 26 becomes somebody else and, and has no backdoor connection with uh, where the original address block um, belongs to and just decides to announce that 128.9 and you know, it's reachable. So this will become um, invalid AS case, and I mean more case, that is the address only reachable through one path, but not the other. So I'm gonna show you some measurement data that shows that the more is not a story we made up, uh, it does exist in actually quite a lot of cases, probably more than you thought it would be. So some, a cause by the faults, we believe we can identify some of those faults. And some we were explained by friends here that it was actually legitimate operational need. Like, a, yeah, like um, Sunday night when we talk about multi homing, you know, there's situations where the private AIs is multi homes, so the multiple origin, so called origin, they are their uh, providers announce the same address per fix. The challenge here is actually how to distinguish. The, the valid ones from invalid ones so that you don't fall into the uh, trap of uh, black hole. Somebody make the invalid announcement and just let in all your traffic. How we collect the data? Um, thanks to today. Uh, we got your data from the uh, Oregon route view. So you said there's um, lots of people make lots of connections. We are one of them. And um, we collect the data for just a little short of uh, three years. During this time period, we observed 38,000 more cases. That is to say there are 38,000 um, prefixes, one time or the other, had more than one AS claim to be their original AS. And 
your view could be different. Um, sorry, I'm moving again. So your view could be different because you know they've um, peered with so many uh, um, domains. So therefore, he had a broader view. For individual service providers, uh, we look few like you know pick a given moment. We look at three individual ICs. You know, some saw um, 30 more, some 12, and some a larger number, 228. So different people are going to different things, but the more is pretty common. And here's the data um, across that uh, uh, less than three-year period. The starting, if you cannot see the date clearly, the starting from the November of 97 and end July this year. Uh, the y-axis is the top is 4,000, but that's now where the peak ends. The peak actually, the first peak um, in the uh, 98 ends at uh, you know 11,000 something. The second peak early this year is 10,000 something. Um, the majority of, of those peaks actually were from the single AS due to some more function period. There, yes, at the that very moment, there's 11,842 more announcements. That all the, the question is, you have to subtract that one minute from the talk. Is that one is it really 11,000 with single AS, which is what the graph says? Two is are you using the data from the once a day snapshots and most? And my question, I'm wondering how transient this is, what this is happening in one time. Uh, next slide. Okay. <laughs> Little patient, Casey. Uh, but before next slide, I'll show you some statistical number. You know, you see the variation. So, can we abstract anything average ish? So we tried that, and that's the table. Um, the median number means that you know the <laughs> the fluctuates a lot. So for the for example, for 1998, you have so many days, and, and each day has so many um, more cases. You pick the medium, you know, uh, pick the day that's not too many, that's not too few. Um, it comes to be uh, 683, and then we would measure the increase. It seems that the rate of increase of more cases goes up linearly or proportionally with the increase of BGP table size. To answer Casey's question about you know transient or, or, or lasting, now this is a histogram plot for the more lifetime. Uh, along the x-axis is how long the more is going to last. You can see that some more cases last as long as our, our measurement period. And the y-axis is the number of um, more cases. Um, so you can see that the majority of them are actually short lived. And uh, there's a suggestion to say that they're not actually not intended uh, stable operation case, but instead it's you know, false misconfiguration and errors and whatever uh, you have out there. Uh, Randy Bush saw this presentation earlier and he asked us to plot against the, the prefix lines to see if there's any particular case for particular prefix. So we did that. Uh, first, is this absolute number um, against the prefix lines. So you can see that there's a stack on the slash 26. And uh, Randy had this um, hypothesis, saying that you know 26 just was problematic. And he asked to to another plot, uh, which is the the number of more cases against the, the number of PGP routing entries for the same prefix. And you can see that actually um, slash 24 wasn't anything uh, singled out. It's just proportional to you know, um, other prefix, prefix. There's a big spike there uh, for the uh, slash 8. It's not because there are too many slash 8 um, more cases. Instead, there's just so few slash 8 out there. So, you know, there's a 1, 2, or 3. The percentage wise or the ratio wise is big. Um, by the way, I was very surprised when the first time we saw the, the slash eight of more. I thought, you know, slash eight belongs to big guys. Um, big guys normally make their own um, ES announcement and show there shouldn't be multi um, origin amount of things slash eight. But that, you know, if you look at the data, not uncommon. Um, we have a long list of slash eight that is um, <laughs> multi origin. 
So some friends here actually have uh, explained why more happens and you know, why the example I gave you earlier, there's legitimate BGP um, hearing that makes an announcement, and then uh, there's backdoor um, IGP or some static configurations make the same announcement. So they cause the first case of more. It's uh, you know violate in the sense that traffic does go to their destination. There's also the second case um, I also mentioned earlier. It's about private AIs. I said they are just make up the number. Um, the big, big AI number is supposed to be private domain. Then they have multi-home pair with two um, AIs and the two service providers, and both of them are not their purpose. So those are the good cases. It's so good, um, it's okay, but life are not always good. As, we, as I showed you earlier, there, there's facts, and we know that that were uh, due to the um, operational fault cause of facts. And um, there be errors. You know, humans not error free. Well, to make errors, and also there can be intentional traffic hijacking uh, if you don't pay attention to. What are you going to do with this? So the original BGT spec, <laughs> a few years back, does recommend that each prefix should have one single origin AS. But today, as I showed, um, there are optional reasons that there will be multiple origins announcing the same prefix. So I think what we must do is to be able to tell the two, um, you know, which one is valid, and so therefore we can eliminate or stop invalid announcements. And I'll show you a couple of proposals. One uh, we made ourselves, the two is uh, we learned from friends. So the one we made ourselves is to say that let's make another community attribute. And this attribute is going to list um, all the valid yes to announce the same prefix. Um, and you attach community attributes to your uh, BGP route announcement. This will enable the BGP routers to uh, detect the fault that is unintended announcement by somebody. And even um, intentional attack, um, at least in most of the cases we, we believe. And here I'll show you the example. See that slash 18, I know it's MIT, but this is a story. So slash 18 is a private um, address block in you know, a with two, uh, not pairing, connecting to two service providers, and each of them is going to make announcements for that uh, prefix. I'll show you this uh, sum somehow configuration you can put in a router, you know, how you will configure this uh, um, proposed community attribute. Uh, with that configuration, the same thing can be done for the ES58. And uh, so BGT announcement goes out with those, um, the community attributes to tell other guys, you know, saying that you know, if you see announcement from multiple um, places, that's okay because we are all listed in that community attribute. Therefore, if there's some bad guy out there, or maybe this innocent guy but made an error, announce your prefix and put himself into this um, uh, community attribute list, at least the guy in the middle, this um, um, cloud, can tell there, there's um, inconsistency. At least we can send an alarm and check the situation. I think it is a very simple and you know encryption, encryption free, and but yet very powerful uh, mechanism because even you assume that this bad guy is on your path of PHP announcement. As long as there's some path that a good announcement can get through, um, other people can see the conflict and then go check. It's actually very difficult to block all the legitimate announcements given the distributed nature of our internet connectivity. So here we don't use any encryption, any security or anything, which is, you know, we know that it takes time to deploy. Here we use the intrinsic nature of the distributed topology uh, to um, trust that the good announcement is going to reach someone and people are going to notice the difference if there's um, invalid announcements conflicting with the, the correct announcement. So this sounds all good. Um, we think it can be quickly and incrementally deployed because for the announcement, you just need to change the PCP configuration. For the detection, it's a little more difficult because that does require changes of your BGP um, message handling. We think longer term, that's where you should go. For the short term, um, at least you could observe the, the inconsistency or conflict 
if those CGP affinity attributes goes out, you can observe from your looking glass and other things. We do know there is one concern, um, that is the community attributes are not guaranteed to get delivered everywhere. Some people may decide to drop you on some innocent application, not applications. Uh, the, the implementation is just somehow dropped when they decide to, to assert their own community um, attributes there. So I think it is probably the time to fix the handling of the community attributes, as we know that there's effort going on about this extended community attributes drop. We're going to put our own input into that their thing um, to carry it forward. Another proposal is kind of a few years old, um, by a list of well-recognized names a few years back. The proposal is still on the web if you want to take a look. That's a pointer. Uh, so, so more, is a, you know, it's, it's a issue that has existed for some years and people try to figure out a way to do it, uh, to detect valid from invalid. This is how it works. You know, if, if you detect some um, more situation, you go ask your beloved uh, DNS server. And if the DNS server gets configured with this new um, resource record, it could handle, could oh, I'm sorry, I wrote the wrong direction, uh, could tell you that, you know, which AS is a legitimate announcer and which one is not. So this looks also a simple solution. And it could be a generic um, database to provide you this prefix to AS mapping. And uh, it's actually complementary to the proposal I said first. That is, um, you know, you can have both the community attribute solution as well. This, uh, this one, you know, whenever you go into the conflict, you cannot decide due to the community attribute uh, inconsistency. Consistent, you can come check the DNS. And, you know, put on your wish list if the DNS has a security implemented. Uh, this checking could have even be um, um, authenticated. That is not always pretty. It requires changes to DNS and BGP, and DNS is not that <laughs> trustworthy um, if the, the DNS stack is not implemented. There's a question mark there, it's a big one probably. When would DNS stack be ready? I do not know. There's also kind of philosophical concern, that is, you think the routing system should query the naming system? Wouldn't that be a kind of you know, circular dependency routing system also deliver so that you can deliver naming queries as well. The counter argument here, however, for this last one, I think is not a big issue because uh, we could consider the DNS query as kind of, you know, informational things now critically depend on that. But the first two, especially DNS stack deployment, I think it's an open question. I don't have an answer to it. To summarize, this is a point I want you to carry home with. For one, more exists. But two, um, if you just blindly accept the more as a fact, uh, I think that it can be dangerous because it's really open door for traffic hijacking. So we plan to finalize our solution and bring to ITS. Depends on how hard we work, we may catch the November deadline. I said all the questions go to the mailing list, but if the day like us handle, we'll, we'll handle a few. For multi-origin in essence, um, what's your worst case for um, number of community attributes you have, have to add, i.e. for a route that's being originated from more than one AS? Is one AS, do you have an idea how many um, multiple or origins are announced in that same route? Is it 2Z, 3Zs, or is it a lot? Um, I, I, I would get, okay, here's someone else who comes down to that question. Uh, yeah, so, so in answer to that, it would be a uh, 2 d 3 d basically, which can usually conflict with 2 AS and sometimes 3, uh, rarely more than that. We can give you a separate staff drop on. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just, while Lisa was talking, I just, um, to the show IP BGP inconsistent AS, and it turns out there's like 46,533 paths that are associated with inconsistent AS. Of those, 1,165 are unique prefixes, so it's something like 39 paths per prefix. Mm -hmm. 
And there are, as you said, there are two kinds of multi-origin ASS. One is the legitimate one, one is someone misconfiguring their routers and injecting wrong routes, basically. And it's very bad. However, your solution also requires adding more configuration to the system. So if the problem is, you have the problem because it's hard to configure these boxes, now you have to configure them even more. I mean, it's more not basically, and more not can be configured in more different wrong ways. You know what I want to do? I want to hold this for the end, okay? Can you, can you send that, or can somebody capture that and send it to uh, questions at Nanos?